Welcome to 1.8 pre-calculus. 1.8. Today is going to be on 1 to 1 and inverse functions. Function y equals f of x. The domain d is 1 to 1 if and only if for every x in the domain f of x1 equals f of x2 implies that x1 equals x2. Function. Remember, it's a mapping from the domain to the range so that each element of x in the domain is mapped to one and only one element of f of x, the range. In other words, in simple terms, for every x, there is only one y. Okay, that's a function. For every x, there is one and only one y. Well, one to one would say that for every y, there's also only one x. In other words, if these two y values are the same, then the x values that we put in have to be the same as well. Okay, one to one, for example. This is not a one-to-one -one function because we have these y values here. They're the same y value. They're the same y value, but the x values are different. Okay? So, that would not be considered a one-to-one -one function. It's so one-to-one if each element f of x of the range, each element, each member of the set of possible y's is mapped from one and only one element of x. It's kind of like the backwards, the reverse of the definition of a function. Let's get to some examples. Here we use a horizontal line test. To test if it was a function, we use the vertical line test. To test if it's one-to-one, -one, we're going to use a horizontal line test. Example, y equals x squared minus 4x plus 7. It's not one-to-one -one because the horizontal line is going to cross it more than one place. Okay, let's apply the horizontal line test to this graph in A to this graph in B. And we see that A is 1 to 1 and B is not 1 to 1. Again, this is just the designation of a function. Okay? Every function has an inverse relation. Inverse. That would be like what undoes the function. For example, if we have y equals the absolute value of x plus 1, we would have this domain. This would be our possible range. The inverse of that would be if we switched the domain and the range. If we switched them around. So now this becomes the range where it was the domain. This becomes the domain where it was the range. That's called the inverse. The inverse relation is not a function in this case. The, the only time the inverse relation will be a function is when the function was a one-to-one -one function when it, it was a one-to-one -one function, its inverse will also be a function. Given the function f equals just a set of points. Here its domain is 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, and its range is 1, 2, 3. 1, 3, 1, 2, okay. Now, if we wanted the inverse of this relation, we switch these all. We switch the x's and the y's. That's what an inverse is. It's what undoes it. 
And so the domain of the inverse is the range of the original function. The range of the inverse is the domain of the original function. The graphs of a function and its inverse, or of a relation and its inverse, are going to be reflections along the line where y equals x. They're going to be reflections across that line. Here's an example. Now if we drew in the line where y equals x, right here, that, and then reflected that graph, it would look just like that. So the red one is the inverse of the blue one. To find it algebraically, if I give you this and I say, what is the inverse of f of x equals 3x plus 2? Well, remember, f of x and y are just the same thing. So if we write this, y equals 3x plus 2, and then all we're going to do is switch the x and the y. We switch them. And then we solve this out again for y. And that will give us the inverse function. Okay? And what would happen if we put the inverse function in, into here, if we took f of its own inverse, it would be 3 times this x minus 2 over 3, and we would see working it out that the answer is always x. If you take f of f inverse, the answer will always just be x. We'll look at that some more. Let's look at another function. Okay, again, if f is 1 to 1, the inverse of it is the inverse function. It's a function, if it's 1 to 1. If it's not 1 to 1, then it's an inverse relation. Oh, let's go back and look at that, the way we write f inverse. The inverse function of y equals f of x is written f inverse of x. This is not used in the same way as you've used it before. This simply means the inverse function of x. Another example. From the graph of the function, determine if the inverse relation is a function, and if it is, sketch its graph. So the inverse relation. Remember, we draw our line and we flip it over. Will it be a function? Well, we know that it starts out as a, as a function. We reflect the graph. And we look at this. Does this one now, the inverse, does that pass our vertical line test? Well, yeah. If it passed our horizontal line test before we flipped it, then it's going to pass a vertical line test afterwards. f inverse of f of x equals x. Always. Always. If you take the inverse of a function and you insert the function itself, your answer is x. Let's look at some examples. f of x equals x cubed. The inverse function is the cube root of x. Now if you put f of f inverse the cube root of x to the third is just going to be x. They will always undo each other. That's what inverse means. It means undoes. So verify that g of x equals x plus 2 over 2 is the inverse of f of x equals 2x minus 1. So we're going to take 1 and insert it into the other and see if the answer is x. If it's just x, then, yeah, then, it's, then they're inverses. So we take g of f of x, g of f of x, f of x is 2x minus 1, so we put 2x minus 1 in here, plus 1 over 2, and we do the math. 2x minus 1 plus 1 is 2x, 
over 2, 2x over 2 is just x. So yes, those are in fact inverses of each other. You could have done f of g of x. Didn't matter the order. So we would take f of x is 2x minus 1 and we would insert, insert x plus 1 over 2 where the x is here. So 2 times x plus 1 over 2 minus 1. These 2's will cancel. You'll be left with x plus 1 minus 1. Plus 1 minus 1 undoes it and you have x. Anyway, probably lots of questions. Ask them in class. Thank you.